Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to our videos and hit that bell for notifications. Also, head on over to our Instagram page and follow us there and check out our Facebook page for all our updated content. Thanks. Welcome to Cornell Marine Program's Digital Learning Podcast. My name is Rory McDish and I'm the host of this show. I was thinking the other day about my oysters. I'm overwintering at the Marine Lab as a part of the SPAT program. I need to check on them after this winter. Maybe I can get Mr. C to help me clean my oysters again. Last year, we pulled my net, sorted the oysters, and we had a good time. We even produced our SPAT Oyster podcast that day. Let's see if, and I mean if, Mr. C is willing to help me again this year after I pulled that empty shell trick on him last time. Hey, Mr. C. Hey, Rory. What's up? Hey, I was wondering if you would help <clears throat> me again with my oysters this year. Sure. I'd be glad to help. If I get some real oysters this year, instead of the empty oyster shells you gave me last time. Ah, come on, tell the whole story. I did give you a bunch of real oysters. Yes, you did. Uh, and they were real tasty. Hey, uh, remember that shellabration video we did last December for the Back to the Bays program? Yep. Why don't we focus the show on the commercial oyster growers who work the Long Island Sound waters? That's a great idea, Mr. C. For the celebration event, we interviewed some commercial oyster growers. Growing oysters commercially is really hard work and a growing marine industry here on Long Island. I have enough to handle just keeping up with my small number of oysters. I can't imagine working with thousands and thousands of oysters. You know, we always talk about eating local fresh seafood. I like ordering local oysters at a restaurant when I get out. Guess where those oysters come from? Commercial growers. Yes, buying fresh oysters from a fish market is one of the perks of living here on Long Island, Mark. This is a blast from the recent past. Here's a video clip we produced for Celebration last November with interviews from commercial oyster growers. So the next time you have a local oyster, you can appreciate the hard work that goes into providing you with a fresh, delicious oyster. <music> This production originally aired as a part of our virtual celebration event, accessible by paid ticket holders. We encourage you to support the programs this virtual event supported and welcome contributions of any level. Please look in the description for our Back to the Bays links to online giving and links to the SPAT program for their online giving as well. Thank you. Welcome to Cornell Marine Program's Digital Learning Podcast, Celebration Edition. The focus of this show will be on a very important aspect of celebration, and that's oysters, and more specifically, the incredible people who grow them. So let's get Mr. C on board so we can get this special celebration show started. Hey, Mr. C, today we're going to focus on a really special Cornell Marine Program event that starts today. You know what I'm talking about? Well, Rory, I think it's the first weekend of December, so it must be celebration. What a great event. I look forward to this every year. Yeah, I do too. And this is the ninth annual event, such an important fundraiser for SPAT and Back to the Bays. For this show, we're going to have some members of the Long Island Oyster Growers Association as special guests. But first, I want to introduce you to the Celebration event director and an oyster lover. You know who I'm talking about, Mr. C? I think, Rory, you're talking about Kim Barber. That sounds great, Rory. I'm really interested in hearing more about the event from Kim uh, and, and getting to know the oyster growers. Well, let's let her in. Hey, Kim, how you doing on this very special day of Celebration? Very special. Hi, guys. I'm doing well and so glad to be with you kicking off our virtual celebration event. So tell us about the oyster growers role in this event. Sure. Well, we can't have celebration without oysters and we don't have oysters without oyster growers. Uh, so if you've joined us for past celebration events, then you know that the first thing you get to experience when you pick up your wristband is a complimentary plate of freshly shucked local mm -hmm. oysters shucked by SPAT members usually. Uh, so it was really important to somehow still feature the local oyster industry as part of this event as they've had a difficult year like so many of us have. Uh, so what do you say? I think we should uh, get to meet some of the growers and learn about what goes into oyster farming. Hi everybody. Thanks for, thanks for being here. 
So let's jump right into the questions. I'm so glad that we have you guys here. It's, it's awesome to have uh, all you oyster growers. I'm a, I'm a SPAT member myself, so uh, I, I, I love them. So uh, this is a question for everybody, and uh, I just wanted to know how you guys got started uh, growing oysters in this business. Maybe we'll start with Ben and Dave again. Um, my career in oysters began with a small article in the Suffolk Times that talked about the SPAT program. It was the first time I had ever heard of it, and it was just up the street from where we lived, and it sounded intriguing. Uh, so I walked into the classroom there probably in the winter of 2013, um, started to learn about oysters. I knew nothing about oysters at the time. And then within a couple of years, all of a sudden we had a 10 acre lease site to go commercial through the scout program. Um, and then here we are today with the oyster farm. I've always had a love for water and I too learned about the SPAT program and through Kim and Greg, I learned the art of oyster growing, the art and the science of farming oysters and started on a farm parcel uh, out in South Hold Bay growing oysters. Uh, so way back in 1997, my wife and I were Peace Corps volunteers in the South Pacific, and we ended up working on a black lip pearl oyster farm, mm. growing these beauties, black oh, lip cool. pearl oysters. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so that we've been, I've been smitten with shellfish ever since. So we did that for a few years, came back, uh, I got a master's degree down at Auburn working with oysters in Mobile Bay, and then I got a job at the Ice Slip Shellfish Hatchery. Uh, worked there for a few years, and then since 2004, I've worked at the East Hampton Shellfish Hatchery, uh, managing that operation. And then just just the last couple of years, we started our own farm, which is something I've wanted to do forever. So this uh, year is actually the first year that we've had stuff come up to market. So I'm a relatively new family farmer, but I've been smitten by shellfish for a couple decades now. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations on your first year producing, you know, production. How about you guys, Meg and, uh, and Kim? Uh, I started at SPAD in 2007, um, and I went to the lectures. Then I followed up by, um, I guess, um, self-educating myself and taking other classes online. I uh, worked for a few other farms and started to develop our farm in 2013. But my family were oyster farmers in Long Island, from the early 1800s until the 1930s. So I'm kind of reviving wow. our family legacy. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, in the spirit of, you know, promoting the industry in general and so many of the great growers, I was hoping, you know, we could speak about the Long Island Oyster Growers Association for a minute. And uh, Ben, I know you play an important role uh, in that association. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, what the goals are, what you guys are up to, and uh, yeah, what's going on. So Lyoga puts, brings together all the farmers in Long Island. Uh, right now we have uh, more, almost 100 farmers that are part of the organization right now. And uh, I, I tell people that uh, the uh, New York oysters went from being the best oysters in the world in the late 1800s to the best kept secret in the world. Mm. So people who knows about them, knows about them, but every day you keep finding people that, oh, I didn't know we have oysters in New York. We actually produce the best oysters you can find in the area. So we encourage people to get educated, to find out, out about the oyster farmers, and events like this, celebration, are fantastic for that. Oysters are part of a, a party, a celebration, and they go well with the New York parents. So we want to thank you guys for hosting us tonight and also allowing us to uh, educate people about the benefits of oysters. But I have a next question is, uh, for uh, Ben and Dave. So I know growing oysters is really hard work. So uh, what are some of the challenges you've had uh, in growing oysters over the years? So it is a lot of hard work. One of the biggest challenges is actually access to water, where we can have an oysters and be protected where the oysters are growing. Oysters will take the flavors based on the water where they grow. So you want to be unique, and you want to actually have a place where you know your oysters will develop a great flavor. It requires a lot of investment up front, but once you are in, you are really in. People love oysters. We're in a great trend. So I just ask people, keep eating oysters and find out where your oysters are coming from. Right. That's cool. Growing oysters, it's farming. And farming, it's low capital. Oyster farming is low capital, but high labor. It's a lot of work. It's dirty work. Mm -hmm. uh, you're at the mercy of the weather. 
You're at the mercy of the tides. You're at the mercy of your equipment. Um, so key is being prepared for long, hard days of hard work. Gear is heavy. It's muddy. It's dirty. It's wet. Sometimes it's cold. Sometimes it's incredibly hot. That a lot of there are a lot of animals that cut into the oyster profit before you even haul them up to the deck, sort them, and bring them to market. You know, a day in the life on the farm is just like like Steve said. It's 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 farming. It's labor intensive, but it's really enjoyable and really rewarding at the same time. Especially when, in my case, I'm doing it with my family, teaching my kids how to do it. Uh, my wife already knows the drill, so we're just out there trying to trying to work together, get through the day without me getting too <laughs> too crazy. But uh, it's it's usually always a great day on the water. Oysters are a celebratory food, and it like it kind of brings people together. Um, and I also really just it's rewarding to be able to work outside and problem solve and. It's, it's also an adventure, which is a really, part of it is that's what I really enjoy about it. So Barley, why, why did you want to participate in celebration and support of CCE Marine Program? Well, uh, firstly, the, the sh my shellfish reason. <laughs> that's a good one, I like that. <laughs> to get my product and the name out and uh, the altruistic reason is just to support CCE because, you know, without CCE, you wouldn't have three of these growers on this board here. They're all SPAT mm -hmm. members. And you, so without CCE, you wouldn't have SPAT and you wouldn't have the, all the great support and knowledge that comes out of CCE. So it's a great organization. And I really think it's helped in getting the word out about our marine environment and shellfish and aquaculture. So I'm really happy to be part of it. I haven't been able to participate in the real thing up in Greenport yet uh, in the past few years. So this is the next best thing. All right. Well, this next question is, uh, is for everybody. So as being uh, oyster farmers, I know you have a product to sell. So, uh, you know, where do you sell your oysters? Well, up until this year, COVID has taken a, a big hit mm. on all of us. Uh, I used to sell predominantly to restaurants, but restaurants have been impacted. So as a result, chefs, are not buying as many oysters. They're not setting up raw bars. That's been really difficult for most of the oyster farmers. Uh, although I have been pretty successful at selling at vineyards and at breweries uh, where I can actually sell retail, which is this, has been the sweet spot for me as a farmer to be able to shuck, serve, and chat up my oysters. Uh, yeah, I, I have... I feel like the community here of farmers have sort of been really helping each other. So we're, we're at another farm who started a pop-up farm stand. And uh, I, we've done a few pop-ups like Steve, which has been really fun. But they are a lot of work, I have to say. And I've, I've maintained some of my, my chefs in the city, but they, they are really struggling. Yeah, in, um, in normal times when it's not a pandemic, um, we do sell a lot um, direct to customer. We are a smaller boutique oyster farms. So between pop-ups at vineyards, um, also at our farm tours um, and special events as well, that's where we would sell the majority of our oysters. Um, but what has been really impressive this year is, um, you know, the customers, people really love their oysters. So when restaurants were closed and when people couldn't go out, um, I was really impressed with how many people were willing to just um, be adventurous and learn how to shuck at home and come pick up from our self-serve stands, um, bring the oysters home and enjoy them that way. You almost, you know, can't keep the really passionate oyster eaters, oyster eaters away from oysters. And, and they came out in a big way uh, to help us. And for a lot of this summer, the self-serve oyster stand was the only way we could sell oysters. We want to hear from you. What are your favorite ways to eat oysters? We make a homemade cocktail sauce, which is fantastic. So you take Saho Bay oysters <laughs> without Saho caustic sauce. A <laughs> recipe is online if you guys want to get it and make it at home. Personally, I like my oyster straight out of the water. Nice. With nothing on it. Because oysters, they have the miroir. Wine has the terroir where they grow, the land that they grow in, the soil that they grow in, water. The oysters take the flavor of the water they grow in. 
And the Peconic Bay is a wonderful body of water. It has a delicious taste. And I personally don't like to mess up the flavor of the natural oyster. Uh, I like to keep it simple too, just fresh, cold, and with a little shot of lemon or just on the grill until they pop. Well, I love big oysters cooked on an open fire and I put all sorts of things inside of them. <laughs> That's good too. I like that. What sorts of things? What's your favorite? Bacon, wine, pesto, cheese. I mean, you can really put anything in there. It's like my favorite way to eat them. So before uh, Kim uh, wraps us up with a, a final question, uh, is there any other information you'd like to share with us uh, and the viewers? Um, I mean, everybody's, everybody's heard it, you know, that's just to be proud to grow them and proud to eat them because, you know, they're a, I don't want to get too technical, but you're eating a low trophic level animal that requires very little inputs. It's a really green form of protein and we just can't overlook that, you know, there's, they're out there providing habitat, they're filtering the water, removing excess nutrients, and it's just, you know, there's really nothing bad about it. The more oysters you eat, the more you help clean the bays. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's I a really big... miss an opportunity to remind everyone that every oyster filters 50 gallons of water a day. Mm -hmm. So when you're supporting your local oyster farmers, you're also supporting uh, your local water quality. So please, uh, eat oysters, save the world. So 80% of seafood in the United States, even if a portion of that is caught here, it's, in, it's exported to another country and then processed and then um, shipped back to the United States. And 20% of uh, seafood in the United States is actually farm-raised or grown in, in an aquaculture setting. And I really think it's important for us to buy local um, seafood and support our economies and our communities. Absolutely. Well said, Meg. That's part of our fish program, Fresh, Indigenous, Sustainable, Healthy. And we're trying to get people to purchase from you guys, purchase from our local fisheries and stuff so we don't have to export it and then import it again. So uh, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, thanks, guys. I mean, this was really interesting, and uh, I loved hearing your stories and, and some of the struggles that you guys have been through. I mean, it's it, like you said, it's hard work. I, I do like uh, four lantern nets a year, and, uh, and I go home and I'm, I'm spent, you know, so <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing it full time. Uh, be safe out there. We uh, respect and appreciate everything you do, and thanks again for participating tonight. Go celebrate. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. That was great to hear from our local oyster growers and learn how much work is involved in the dedication they have to this industry. Yeah, Rory. Next time I slurp a raw oyster, I'll have a greater appreciation for all the hard work uh, that goes into growing oysters. Now that's our show for today. Thanks again to Kim and the Oyster Growers for joining us and thank you for your support of Cornell Marine Program through participating in this event. We really appreciate your support, especially through this year. Thank you.